Hello, Facebook. It's Reed Mahalko from ReadAboutSex.com, broadcasting live from Intimacy Fest. I'm going to try to be as kind as I can and intentional because I'm actually nude right now. Um, but we have baby goats here today. Hi, guys. Hi. Say hi to Facebook. Hi. Uh, Intimacy Fest is kind enough to have some baby goats for us to play with later today. So um, if... Uh, just getting your baby goat fix. And I also promised that I would um, Facebook Live from the pool today. So as you're signing on and saying hi to the baby goats, um, where are you signing in from? Where are you watching from today? Hi, guys. It's so nice to meet you. We're talking about shame hangovers today. Yeah. We had a, a play party last night at Intimacy Fest. And then this morning as we were doing a check-in, uh, what we were talking about was what people were feeling, having um, explored uh, potential edges around sexuality and intimacy and connecting. Um, for those of you who don't know, uh, a play party is what the kids are calling orgies these days. But it's also, for me, it's a um, situation where uh, we have a big welcome circle, a big check-in, and we go over the rules. We have a bunch of communication exercises. Um, and uh, and then we open up the evening, uh, we have a safer sex conversation, and then we open up the evening for people to explore and to play uh, in whatever adult ways um, or non, even non-sexual ways uh, that they would want. And so one of the things that people go through, and this isn't just for sex um, and play parties, this can be like for going to a retreat and having an ecstatic experience. And now this is me trying to not show my nudity. Um, People have, say goodbye to the goats. We'll come back later maybe, or tomorrow. Or I guess the goats aren't here tomorrow. Um, but when people have ecstatic experiences, huh? I will, I, I'll, I'll do it afterwards. Thanks, Michael. Um, the, uh, what happens when people have ecstatic experiences, you know, even if it's like your first kirtan, or your first yoga retreat, um, or maybe you go do you know, some sort of healing modality, and you have a big epiphany, um, the next day, for some people, ha, ha cold, um, ha, for some people, um, they end up having uh, basically kind of like an endorphin hangover, um, and also uh, kind of like, um, I guess, buyer's, buyer's remorse, where you maybe pushed your edges, um, tried something new, and then the next morning, you have a lot of uh, worries or concerns or second thoughts about your experience. Like, I really have tried that thing last night. And what's interesting in, uh, in being a nerd around sex and relationships is the idea that like going to a kirtan and singing your heart out um, and chanting, you know, Om Shanti Shanti, there isn't a lot of cultural shame around that. So most people don't have a shame hangover the next day. Um, you might just have an endorphin drop and feel sad or um, feel quiet. Um, it can show up like a lot of different things for people, right? Uh, it's more like you need to integrate, you need time to process and to integrate. Uh, and some of that is, I think, you know, uh, not being a, an endorphin research scientist, but I think a lot of that for some people is, you know, this basically this crash, this hangover from having um, a lot of blood chemistry, a lot of endorphins and oxytocin and stuff happening in your system. And, uh, and I'm gonna s swim over here. This is the, um, <clears throat> this is the water slide uh, that I came down uh, lying on my belly on the first day and I, I cracked my head open. Uh, not cut, cracked it, but I just, you know, hit my head over there and like a moron and, uh, and then just split my skin open. Um, so I'm going to have a nice little Harry Potter scar uh, for everybody from now on, which I'm not, ec not ecstatic about, but I'll deal with. That was my, my bad. Um, but with with sexuality, with exploring sexual edges, uh, what happens is there is a lot of cultural baggage and shame. And so then people will sometimes wake up the next morning and not only are they wrestling with their endorphin drop, 
but they're having all these thoughts, you know, about if, am I a good person? Am I okay? Is what I did last night or explore last night, um, was that uh, good for me? And it was, it was something that we talked about this morning. And I just wanted to, um, to uh, whoops, you almost got butt. Uh, I guess I can show butt on Facebook, can't I? There we go. Uh, that's all you get. Uh, hit, some, hit some emoticons if you like that. Um, yeah, so we just talked about that, that hangover effect and normalized it, like talked about that that is a normal thing and that if you're in your head the next morning after trying something new, uh, especially if you liked it, um, it's okay to feel bad about it. Like that's kind of normal. And, um, and that you're not a bad person because you think you might be a bad person. Uh, a lot of us get caught up in our hamster wheels of death where those hamster wheels are just running and spinning and squeaking and we're kind of kicking our own asses and when you also combine that with an endorphin drop um, that shame hangover can be really uh, really difficult for some people if you if you're not used to it like I know I that that happens to me so um, I kind of expect it or if I forget about it when it comes and starts happening I remember what's happening and I can have a lot more grace and, um, and gratitude and compassion for myself. And I can also hold space for my friends and my lovers who might be going through that same thing. And then I can offer reassurance that they're not a bad person or I can, um, I can ask for reassurance um, and I can reassure myself. So that was, that was really it. I don't know that I need to make this video super, super long today, uh, especially on a weekend. And, uh, and I just wanted to let you know that if you ever feel bad, like you're a bad person, um, shame is the idea uh, that you are somehow a bad person. Guilt is the idea that you've done something wrong. And I think exploring sexuality in consensual ways and, you know, going at whatever speed works for you, I think people, when in doubt, should go more slowly. Than, uh, than speedy around exploring things. Give yourself permission to change your mind, give yourself permission to slow things down, give yourself permission to say stop or pause. Um, these things are vital, I think, for exploring sexuality and you also have uh, like your, your God-given right, your birthright, is that you are allowed to like the things you like and not like the things you don't like. So if you try something new and explore it, um, let's say you've always wanted to have a threesome and you have a threesome and you, you're like, huh, like, I don't think I like them. I think that that's great. You tried something new and, um, and you have information about stuff that you don't like. Like that is a win-win too. You're not unevolved or broken because you do not like every crayon in the crayon box of sex. And you're not unevolved or broken because you have a shame hangover uh, the next morning. So I just wanted to reinforce that in uh, broadcasting from the pool uh, here at Intimacy Fest. And, um, and I hope you enjoyed the baby goats. Um, this is Reed Mahalko signing off until tomorrow. Bye, everyone. Leave your comments, and I'll check your comments later. And I hope you're having a great day wherever you are. And, uh, and don't go down uh, water slides face first like I did. Remember, it's a cautionary tale. Bye. Oh, uh, yeah, and if you want information about play parties, you can go to readaboutsex.com forward slash play parties, and, uh, and that will give you a, a sign-up list for some resources. Got to mention that. All right, now I'm really going. Bye. All right, I'm going to give you one more little butt shot. Boop. Boop. There you go. That's all. Ciao. <laughs>